Flawless from Couple of Dabblers. I am back today with a update video about what I've been doing from May to July because the last actual update was in May so it's been about two months. Um, I have some progress for you. I've been stitching um, steadily, slowly, but surely I've got some progress. Uh, then we can talk a little bit about Mm, I guess in our daily life what we've been doing and I'll tell you about my plans for the next maybe one month or so because I'm not sure when I'll give you an update again it could be in a month it could be in two and um, life is always random so we can't predict these things um oh just an uh, uh, well a reminder I guess this is a channel by myself and my husband JP who is painting over there painting you can't see him uh, which is probably a good thing um, we have had some I, I guess significant increase in subscribers because of his previous video on a battle report that you probably don't care about um, and um, a bigger YouTuber also mentioned our channel name. Mm. Death by Dragons. Uh, and that's how we got more subscribers. But I'm assuming after they saw all this weird contents, they might unsubscribe. So whatever. Okay. Let's get into what we've been doing then. Um, oh, not what we've been doing. What I've been doing. In terms of cross stitch, I I'm sorry, I haven't stitched much. Okay, uh, so for those who might not know what I'm doing right now in terms of cross stitch projects, I have three whips. I have got a Dimensions Gold Collection um, Victorian Elegance, uh, and then I've also got wow, Neural Stem Cell. Well, electron microscope, but JP mm. said it should be fluorescent microscope. Correct. That one's for him. Um, I've also got the whip that you've seen a billion times. It's the Countryside by Max Stitch. That one is a big one. Um, I think the project size is about 50 something centimeters by 40 something centimeters on 14 counts. And uh, that's going to be a long journey whip. So uh, I'll hopefully find the pictures of, I guess, what the project looked like in my last update video and then show you so you can compare them. Um, but I'll show you the neuro stem cell one first. progress I think last time when I showed you it was literally just the black because I just started not long ago and this was this is after probably two months progress compared to what I did before as in I risked oh, let me start from the beginning so I actually started this a while ago on black ada because as you could see if it's under a microscope, a lot of background is black. So I thought to save time, I would just start on black ADA. And then that means I don't have to stitch all the black. But um, I started on 18 count black, two strands. And I really didn't like how the stitches look. And stitching on black ADA means the time when I could stitch was very limited. Um, so I didn't really make much progress and I also didn't like stitching on it at all. So that means after a few months, the progress was so slow and so little. Um, so I decided to change the fabric completely. So this time I did 25 count even weave. Um, the black is two strand. So two over one, but all the other colors is one over one. Um, I might 
make another clip just to show you in details what the project actually looks like because the black is definitely black you could barely see the fabric underneath and that's exactly what i want but um i didn't know how i was gonna deal with the other colors um so i think the first few stitches of some greens i did two strands over one square but it was so bulky the the needle just couldn't get through all the threads so then after that I decided to change it to one strand instead but I was too lazy to take the two strand stitches out so I just left them there I think altogether I made 10 stitches of the two over one um, of other colors um, so I'll just show you again that's what it looks like I know it looks very boring because for now mostly you can see it's black but um, being very polarizing on what you can do right now is pretty cool because I mainly do this on the weekend um, and sometimes I have a lot more time to work on this but sometimes I just do it a little bit at night after um you know the adult stuff or before lockdown um some social events so sometimes your brain well my brain would be pretty dead because i'm pretty introverted and um too much social situations would really drain me out in those times just stitching black was nice because then I didn't have to think too much, figure out, okay, this color goes here, this color goes there. I could just roughly know, okay, the, this is all black, I'll just stitch, stitch, stitch. It's relaxing, but also, you know, I didn't have to use too many brain cells. So this is nice. Um, and obviously, I pair it with the tiny rig. You don't mind that. Unfortunately, comparison, it's not as much progress as what I did before. Because uh, as you can see, before there would be a lot more pink um, and also yellow and orange. I haven't got there yet. But slowly and surely I'll get there. That's just for comparison. Oh, and also, um, because this one has 50 colors, including the black, uh, it fits on the Packle Organizer really nicely, so I'm just using the Packle Organizer. So you use the needle to get one strand and just pull it out. It's really handy, and then obviously you have the Packle Slides, so you put down the symbols yourself and you know exactly which color it is. And look at the color palette, it's so pretty. Obviously, it's a very green dominated color palette, but still. Once in a while, when you get to other colors, especially the bright blues and some pinks, it's really exciting. But for now, I'm just working with lots of greens. And then I know, despite lots of black, oh, you can see any roaching there. <laughs> yeah, a bit of, bit of legs right there. Anyways, um, that's not a lot of black. It's because um, my black is on a cone. I have to say that DMC black, well, I assume all blacks, um, is, is a bit thinner than other threads. That's why I have to use two strands, otherwise there's too much white underneath and it doesn't, I guess, recreate the feel of, you know, everything is under black background. Which is a shame, but two strands do really nicely in terms of coverage. Okay, and then I'll show you 
my Victorian elegance. So that's where I'm at. And obviously I use it, well, I, I put it in a hoop and that's the hoop mark. And being me, I can't be bothered. Ooh, got a needle in my sleeve, okay. So I still have some um, threads behind. So that's where I'm at. I think last time when you saw it, uh, the face was probably the same, but now there's a lot more dress and a bit of a pearl. It's far. Yeah, yeah, a bit of pearls and a bit of the hat here. And there's a bit of hand, I think. Uh, this one is the kit fabric. I think it's 28 count mushroom, maybe even weave? It doesn't, it doesn't feel like linen. It's quite nice to stitch on, very sturdy. But um, the whole the whole project needs three strands, so same. I will later on insert a I guess more detailed video of what the project looks like. Um, this one has four blends for now, because um, the actual focus is the hat. Well, I should show you the preview, shouldn't I? So that's the preview. And it has the, I guess, the ribbon art, ribbon embroidery here. So the actual focus is on the hat. Um, this particular one I bought off, oh, secondhand off a Facebook un unload, stash unload group. So even though you can find it still, um, this particular kit is uh, a US version so that means there's no organizer you have to organize yourself because all the threads came in the bundle so um, this one came in three bundles and um, the chart had a little section that tells you how to separate each colors um, and it took a little while but it's okay just showing you again. My stitches don't look very good because of the three strands. And also I think because this particular kit is quite old technically, the threads are a bit fluffy. And three strands, it's slightly bulky for 28 count over two. Um, so there's a lot of uh, resistance sometimes when you pull your threads out. And after a while, the threads actually break. And it happened to me twice on two different colors. I was just stitching and doing my normal thing. And then suddenly I realized, you know, I could take out the needle and the thread was broken. And I was very confused. Anyway, it's fine. So sometimes people like to see the back. It's a, it's a pretty messy back because I do carry my color but now I make sure I carry the threads where um, there wouldn't be any I guess empty space so the threads wouldn't show and there's a color that I will still be using so I stitch this one normally after I finish work um, on a good day I could get an hour to an hour and a half stitching time while watching something with JP. Um, I not well, I try to finish at least one length of thread, but sometimes it doesn't happen. Um, these days we tend to do overtime quite often, so it will be you know half an hour overtime, and when I get, get home, it's 11 o'clock, uh, and then you try to get into the mood to relax you talk a little bit and then it's 11 30 so it's it's hard to really stitch a lot after work uh, but we make do because we do enjoy hobbying together after work um because 
I start really late. I start at 2 p.m., which means I get up late. Um, but JP's job, it's sort of like a normal time, so it's not very often that we get to hang out during the day. So we ended up just, you know, trying to hang out more after I finish work. So that's this one. Oh, I need to get to uh, the other whip. Okay, I'm back. Sorry, not as organized as I could be. Let's drink some coffee. But first... Okay. So, this is the Countryside by Max Stitch. Like I said, it's quite big because the extra fabric is, you know, folded up in the Grand Guard. And I put this on my Lowry stand. And this is the popped thread for now. Um, and I'm happy to report that I've finished second page. And now I'm not quite half into third page yet. But I'm finishing, you know, sort of uh, one 10 by 10 square. Uh, each two nights at least yeah every two days um just do a closer look and make sure the parked threads do not go into my coffee tasty tasty threads mm -hmm. it is really pretty now especially from afar you really feel this autumnal atmosphere with the leaves and the tree and a bit of sky. Right now this section I'm working with um, mainly like white, light grey. It's a little bit boring but I think once I go up here there's a bit more leaf and then it will go back to you know the orange, reds territory uh, the other day i was oh sorry i should have said this is a kit um i bought on amazon and once i finish it whenever that's gonna be it will be a gift for my parents back in china i think they still have enough wall to hang something i got plenty of wall uh, thanks um so i'm using the kit fabric uh it's 14 count 8r Obviously, two over one. Um, there's a lot of. Well, this one has 40 something colors. Considering its size, it's not too bad. So, it's not. As you can see, it's not too many colors. Not like a having a design situation. But still, sometimes um, you do have a little bit of confetti. Uh, well, that's that. And I'll show you the back again. I just want to sort of bring this to your attention. Obviously, I started from this corner and I was sort of doing a bit more, I guess, cross country. So there's a lot more thread going everywhere and a bit more bulky. And also, there are a lot more knots i'm not sure whether you could see and then later on when i changed to sort of a parking method i think there are less knots now and less threads jumping everywhere and also if you look at the stitches i don't know whether it shows on camera to be honest but this section, the stitches are less consistent. Sometimes one stitch will poke out more than the other. So if you touch it, there are a bit more bumps. Whereas um, further along as I go, it's a bit flatter. I think that means as I get more experience, 
I think I'm doing better at laying my stitches. So overall, each stitch looks a bit better or has the potential of looking better. Which is nice. I think this kind of piece that you take a long time to do is like a little part of your stitching journey because as you go, you could tell how you've grown as a stitcher. You have more experience, you have more confidence, you have more skills. It's, it's really nice. But the other day I... Uh, I had a little calculation, let's say, so I'm assuming right now I'm at 12% on this one, considering I've been working from November last year, and I'm so slow. If I, if I continue doing it every day, 100 stitches each day, it will still take me at least two and a half years to finish it. I really have to let that sink in. Won't be allowed to fly by then. Ugh, oh, gee. Um, anyway, so I'll just keep tagging along, enjoying every stitch. Oh, I generally stitch this one before I go, so sometimes... Go where? Before I go to work, thank yeah. you. Um... So I get less time than the other two pieces because it's a bit more unpredictable. Like what I said, sometimes I get up really late and then I just don't end up stitching anything before I go to work. But if that happens, I might use other times to stitch a bit more because as you can see, if I don't stitch, it will never get finished. And I don't want to start heaps and not finish anything. I'd rather finish something and then start another one. So, these are three of my whips. Um, before we get into plans, let's just talk about our, I guess, life right now. So, as you know, or you may not know, Victoria is in our fifth lockdown. Originally, we were planning to just lock down for one week, but the situation did not look positive. And now we're into our second lockdown. Well, the second week of the fifth lockdown. Um, judging by the case numbers now, I don't think two weeks is going to cut it. So most likely there's going to be a bit more lockdown. Um, it doesn't affect us too much because we're still going to work. We're one of the lucky ones. We still get to have our jobs. Um, and we do enjoy staying at home with Amy, the cockroach there. Um, obviously there's no social life anymore, which is bearable. Yeah? Yeah. I'm drink every now and then. Mm. But, um, some of the people out there are, you know, not able to go to work, which which is really unfortunate. Um, we're hoping by everyone doing the right thing, we're in this together, we can, you know, end lockdown soonish. Um, JP and I are having our annual leave mid-August for two weeks. Originally, we were going to go Northern Territory to have a little relaxing a uh, holiday after so long because we haven't left Victoria for well for me it's a bit over two years for you it's more isn't it uh -huh. um so it's, it's gonna be our little holidays and also visit a friend but judging by the situation I don't think it's gonna happen so we might just go to a regional place just change the scene a little bit because I think looking at the same thing over and over again, your brain just gets tired and your mood just, you know, automatically, well not automatically, but eventually naturally just goes down and it's, it's harder to, to cheer up 
That's just how human brains go. Um, Amy just had another checkup. Um, the vet said it in a nice way, saying she's a bit porky, which we already know. Uh, so we were told to give less food to Amy. Um, as a result, Amy finishes her food every night and afterwards licks her ball just to tell us she's not quite satisfied yet, but she's gonna lose some weight. Her belly is a bit big. Um, what else? So this video was supposed to be made last weekend, but um, I was definitely not in the mood at all because of this one. So, I've mentioned many times I have three weeks. I'm planning to have a fourth one because as I expected, my best friend in Australia got engaged. So, I planned for this already. So, I think last time I showed you I bought the wedding sampler by Teresa Wenzler and last week or so I was trying to kit it up. Let's just simply say I did not have a very good experience kitting it up because originally I was hoping that one skein of each colour would be enough but then I was being paranoid and thinking, oh, I don't think it's going to be enough because judging by the chart, some colors have a lot of stitches, but her charts do not tell you exactly how many skeins of each color you might need. And then I went on to some Facebook groups hoping to get some help and answers from other people that have, well, that might have stitched this pattern before, but I don't know whether it's because they literally just read the last bit of your post or what. They don't they didn't end up answering my questions. So I ended up having to figure it out myself. So I made my initial order of one skein each and then I had to do another order trying to figure out exactly how much more threads I need and that gave me huge grief so that was Saturday when I was supposed to make this video and obviously it did not happen because the whole order took hours because I was going back and forth thinking oh maybe this color needs one more or two more skeins or something um, and then if you don't know the pattern also needs Anchor Marlet, which apparently is the DMC Rayon slash Sil or Satin equivalent. And um, I didn't just want to pay like shipping for a couple of Anchor Marlet um, threads because not every store carries that. So I was trying to think of an alternative, uh, but whatever, I, I didn't really reach a conclusion. So I think for now I'm just gonna do normal stitches with normal threads and then figure out what I'm gonna do with the marlet. So I did sort of hit up. the one you have the option also oh, my one is the just cross stitch version um, I guess you have the option of doing the actual you know frame version or a little cushion on the side and if you don't know this is what her color instruction looks like it's not the most clear instruction 
and obviously it's not the most informative. Um, and I uh, obviously I was I was looking at the chart and I was I was not happy because I feel like as a as a young stitcher I really gave myself too much of a challenge at this point. Um, so my my friend told me her wedding earliest is gonna be September. September next year and considering how time-consuming this pattern will be I better start this year just in case so I got the same fabric that they recommended 32 count platinum Belfast and obviously I did not have or iron it if I did, that wouldn't be me. Uh, oh, I bought a fat quarter and then I cut it myself. So there's there's a still a section left, and I calculated it. Um, this particular part of fabric will have a lot more, I guess, space vertically, but horizontally it's slightly tight. But I should still have. At least two inch um, each side for me to frame and these are the threads so some of the colors I bought three skeins um, most of them I bought two skeins and some colors I'm just gonna chance it and I just left it with one skein and this one has a little bit of beads I did buy um, the supposedly alternative uh, DMC satin threads. I bought one, the other one's on back order. But if, if in the end I don't think these are gonna cut it or I'm, I might not have enough, I'll just probably buy the proper anchor marlet ones. It's so pretty though. Also, I've decided, considering um, I didn't really get much help regarding being provided information on this pattern, I feel responsible to, I guess, collect the information myself as I stitch this one whenever I start it, in terms of how many skeins of each colour I'll use, um, what you should, I guess, be more careful of. Um, and also how I prepare everything to get it started. I think I'll probably make a dedicated video just on this one, or at least give you a bit more information on how I get along with the pattern along the way. Um, and depending on how I like the end results or how much grief I will have when I stitch it, I might get more... Teresa Wenzel pattern because I think you get to learn a lot more through stitching hers because her patterns don't just have the cross stitch or back stitch they have a lot more fancier embroidery um, stitches which will be pretty cool um, I have not decided how I'm going to organize my threads for this one when I start I think that's something I need to decide. What else do I want to tell you about this one? So I'm hoping to get it started end of this month or start of August. Um, but having four whips means I'll have to organize how I'm gonna stitch um, each day. Because right now, three whips work really well for me. As I've told you, one before work, one after work, and one on the weekend. Sometimes this changes, but overall, that's how I function. But with four, I'm not sure how to squeeze one in, unless I just um, put one aside and make this one a focus piece. 
But yeah, it's gonna be a... Uh, hmm. Okay. Then, if you don't know, I'm gonna show you, I guess, my first F, well, F-O ever since I started stitching last year in May. So, this is Wedding Ride by Imaginating. It was originally um, a gift for uh, JP's friend's wedding, but because of lockdown, it didn't end up happening. So I, I finished everything except the date. Oh, I'm trying to block the name. It was a little cute one, and obviously I did not wash or iron or anything. Um, so their wedding is rescheduled to this year, November. Let's just hope that it will happen. Um, so I want to show you this in the video because it's part of my plan to fully finish it. I need to stitch on the date. I need to wash, iron, stretch, and then take it to a framer and decide what kind of framing I want to do. Um, but also by showing you this, hopefully it will motivate me to do it because I've been wanting to do this for the last few months, but I still haven't got around to it yet. Uh, yeah. I'll show you once again. So this one's done on 14 count Ada with two strands. I've made some mistakes and it's the first time I did French knots, which I quite like. But um, there were three quarter stitches in here. I didn't notice, so I just did full, full stitches, but eh, then I just left it like that. Also, there should be some French knots here, I think, on this basket. But I didn't like how they looked, so I just got rid of them all together. I think they're quite cute. I hope they like it. So let's just hope I can get this one done next time I see you. Um, another thing I want to show you is uh, what I bought. Well, obviously I kitted up this. Um, another thing that annoyed me about kitting up that Teresa Wensler wedding ride is um, it cost more than I expected because I didn't know how many threads I need. Um, and during these two months, I bought two more patterns as well. And you might be wondering, or oh, I'm pretty sure you told us you are on a budget. How come you just, you were able to buy so many things? It's because I saved up for three months. So I've got a hundred and, well, less than $150. And because of this kit, it, it, I, it cost me almost $100. And then I bought these two patterns, which didn't really cost much at all. So now I've only got $23 left and I'm not happy. <laughs> <laughs> whatever okay so I'm gonna show you what I bought I think last month so I got two patterns there's this one I got from um, Facebook stash unload group it's by Thomas Kincaid obviously I've never done a Thomas Kincaid pattern um, you might be wondering oh why did you buy it I don't just buy pattern because I suddenly like something. Generally, it's with a purpose in mind. So this one will be for my mother-in-law. Because as you know, I did 1935 Aston Martin for my father-in-law. Um, and it's not fair if I just do one for one parent and not the other. And I've been on the hunt for a floral garden-related 
pattern for a while because she loves gardening, she loves plants, she loves nature, she loves traveling. So anything along those lines would do, but also it can't be too girly. Um, so I think this one would do nicely because it's got so many flowers, it's got a lady there with some uh, animals. Goose? Geese. Maybe. So that would be so nice. But unfortunately, uh, I'm looking at the... At the pattern, it's... It's a colored chart. I'm not a fan of colored charts. Because, um... If I take a picture of it... And put it in my PDF reader, good notes then it's hard to mark it off because it's pretty colorful already but I'm sure I can deal so I will at some point start this but not now because I'm pretty busy already and then um, there's another chart that's called something unicorn hmm. Let me go grab my iPad. <laughs> okay, I've got my iPad. So it's called Sacred Grove. It is by um, an independent um, Etsy vandal. So it's a unicorn pattern. If it loads properly. I... Well, you wouldn't know, but I've been on the hunt for a unicorn pattern for quite a while now um, if you are also searching for one you would know that most of the patterns obviously the main focus is the unicorn and being a unicorn the overall color scheme is white ish white gray maybe a bit of shadow if it's at night it's like darker um, obviously it's it's really pretty generally they are very pretty but if you stitch it, it can be boring, especially if it's a big pattern. So I've been on the hunt for a more interesting version of a pattern that has unicorn for a while. Um, I know Heaven and Earth Design has one. I think it's pretty interesting as well, but I was a bit hesitant because I want to try something different if I were to buy a Heaven and List design. So anyways, I was on Etsy and then I found this one. So I think it's by a shop called I Paint with Needle or something like that. I'll, I'll, leave, I'll leave the information down below in the description box. Um, and they happen to have 60% off. So this pattern I got for less than five US, uh, sorry, Australian dollars. Um, and that's the mock-up. It is really pretty. You have the very majestic unicorn. And at the same time, there's a lot going on everywhere else. You have little animals, you have trees, you have, you know, sunlight and flowers, everything. Um, but when I was buying this on the shop, it had uh, different choices. You can choose different counts, different sizes. Um, when I found this particular pattern, the sale was ending. So even though I asked the, the vendor a question regarding how I should choose the size and the count of the pattern, she didn't reply to my question fast enough. So I ended up buying 14 count, the bigger size. I think it's 35 inch by 27. Um, it's probably not the smartest thing to do getting such a huge pattern because, let me see how big it is. It is 488 by 353. 
and the size is 88.54 centimeters by 64.04 it is really big um but i think if i were to do it i would do it on 28 count 101 although i've never done 28 count 101 before so this will be interesting and obviously this will be a long-term project so it will not be started anytime soon <laughs> but i'm really glad i found it although during the purchase i had some trouble because it's not one of those pdf files that the moment you pay you will get the file from etsy um you had to wait for a little bit for the vendor to prepare something so then the vendor just emails the file directly to your email that's amy um but I mean, on, on the status it says dispatched, but I didn't receive anything. So I had to ask the vendor, what's going on? What do you mean it's dispatched? So then she had to resend the files and then I received them. So when she sends it, the mockup, the, um, like the color page, the thread usage and the actual, actual charts, um, are all separate. Uh, lucky with any PDF reader, you can combine them together um, in the order that you prefer. So that's not a big deal. But um, this particular shop give you a gift. So she will give you a freebie. Oh, that's Amy again on the move. <sighs> She'll give you a freebie according to your purchase. So because I chose a unicorn chart, I was given another unicorn freebie. I didn't, I haven't downloaded it yet, um, but it's, well, I had a look, I'm pretty sure it's one unicorn, like mother unicorn with a small unicorn. That one is quite cute as well, but there's a reason why I chose this one, not the other one. It's not as interesting as this one, I think. So that's pretty much the end of uh, what I want to show you. Um, I think I've got everything I've told you, you know, my progress, my purchase and my plans. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know how much stitching I can get done. Um, because, uh, if you don't know, I'm a pharmacist and most of the healthcare professionals have this continuing professional development, CPD points that you have to complete every year. Uh, we have 40 and I have not done any. So before 30th of September, I need to get that done. And that's supposed to take some time. What does that involve? It's online tutorial things, right? Like little read things, quizzes. Yeah, you you have to do at least twenty points of articles that involve quizzes. Um, then the other twenty points could just be reading. But at the same time, you need to record everything that you've done and have a little reflection. It's tedious. It's tedious. It's I I understand it's necessary, but it's got to be done. So that's going to take a huge chunk of my free time in the next few months. And also, uh, we have to do our tax. I mean, all these adult things that are not fun, but have to be done. So I have to do them in the next few months. I know we, well, I said we we're going to go on holidays. Well, we're supposed to have two weeks off, but um, we already have a lot of things planned. It's just boring adult stuff. Uh, so I, I really don't know how, how much stitching I'll get done. But um, I'll definitely see you in a month or so. Because I do have other video ideas planned. And with the Teresa Wensler project, I'll definitely let you know how I get on with it. 
um, give you information that might help you. But for now, I have to say, if you want to do a Terenza Wensler project, you need to go on to her website. Um, I think it's twdesign.com to see whether there are any, um, I guess, like the error clarification sort of information on a particular pattern because her patterns were published you know, as different versions on different, um, I guess, magazines or like booklets, uh, there could be some errors. So I think she gathers the information or the feedbacks and then provides clarifications. Um, and that might help you in some way. And I did go on to the website to have a look. So that's my first advice for now. Um, by the way, um, we do have an Instagram account and it's supposed to be for both of us, so me and JP, but JP is not very good with social media in general, unless- You make me sound one. old. In, in, well, How unless- How do you post a picture? <laughs> unless it's Facebook. He is super active on Facebook. Um, but in terms of uh, YouTube, I have to tell him that, that someone well, like commented under his video and then he'll go and reply to it anyways so for now i will be leading this instagram account and i'll leave the handles here um the plan is from now on i will be posting pictures of my progress more often um unfortunately I don't think I can post the Teresa Wensler one on there because this friend that I'm stitching this for actually is my Instagram account follower. Um, I don't want her to see it. So I will just show you my progress in the video because I don't think she cares about my videos. Um, make sure you, well, if you're interested, make sure you go follow us on the Instagram account. It's the same same name, couple of devils. Um, just don't be surprised if randomly you'll see some other pictures, you know, of a Warhammer model or a Kings of War model, of a battle report or something like that. Because, you know, it's it's both of our platforms, not just mine. So that's it. Let's just say I'm glad I have a channel during lockdown in this special time because it gives me a reason to glamour up even though I have nowhere to go but I've got videos to make um, it's it's nice to have a little platform and tell people who actually care about what you do what you've been doing because I don't really have anyone that's into cross-stitch around me in my daily life um, and obviously you can't go out and meet people uh, and you can craft together these days i know there there are online means you can go you can turn to but it's, um, i'm not a i mean i i haven't attended any of those um so it's it's nice to be able to do what we do as, as a hobby, making videos, doing, doing, doing crafting related things, having fun, even though we're stuck at home. I hope you're having fun doing whatever you're doing as well. Um, make sure you protect yourself, stay safe, stay happy, and I'll see you when I see you.